Okay, my YouTube people. Somebody asked me for a basic wiring diagram for their motorcycle. They're building a custom bike. I'm sure you saw in my other videos, I have a custom built chopper I built myself, did the wiring on it. So I just want to show you the basics of the minimum that you need to be on the road and to be safe. Now this doesn't include turn signals. At the end of this video, in the upper corner, I'll include a video of a walk around of my chopper. In the lower part, I'll include a video that shows how to wire turn signals. My chopper doesn't have turn signals. It's very minimalistic, so let's go over exactly what you need. We'll start over here at the battery. This is the battery positive. I want to show one thing. This designation equals a common ground. That's the negative side of the battery, and that's basically on a motorcycle going to be the frame. Off of the battery, you come with a hot wire. Now on my chopper, I only have a 15 amp circuit breaker, and that's because I have an LED front headlight bulb, and I have an LED rear brake light tail light bulb. The only thing the ignition system's really powering is the coil. That's the only thing that really draws any current on my end. After the circuit breaker, you come over and you come to your main ignition switch. Mine happens to be a three position switch. It's off, on, and then it's on with a wire that goes to the headlight. So I can ride the bike without the headlight turned on. That would be an alternate wire that would come over here and you just wouldn't have this wire here. You can do it with just an on off switch, but when you turn it on, not only does it power the whole system, it powers the headlight. The reason I did this was twofold. The old bikes, you could ride them without a headlight, and that was one of the things I wanted. But the other thing is, my bikes kick only. So when I was kicking it, I wanted full power to be going to the coil and not have to be worrying about the headlight being on, drawing power away from the coil, just in case the battery was low. Anyway, you come out of the on-off switch, and you have to come to some kind of terminal or some kind of common block for 12-volt power. You don't want to hang these five wires on your on off switch. So I came over to a junction block and from there that's where I sent power around. So the first thing you have to do, these are all connected internally like that. You send a wire up to the headlight and you only need one wire on that headlight. I only have one wire on my headlight. I drilled a hole and put a toggle switch right on the headlight and that changes from my low to high beam right there. And then I didn't draw it here, but the headlight is grounded, has a common ground to the frame. The headlight has a ground internally that goes to the bucket and the buckets ground through the forks back to the frame. So that's how it gets a ground up there. I'm gonna go a little bit out of order in this. The next wire you have is a hot wire that comes down and it goes to your rear light. And you come down here to the rear light with that hot wire and again, this rear light is grounded internally. That's another one I forgot to draw. But anyway, power comes down and you gotta have it go into a brake light switch. On mine, this brake light switch is right at the master cylinder and it's a pressure switch. And you have hot going to one side and then when it sees pressure, it closes the switch. Power comes across here and goes to the brake light. The other wire you have down here is the running light. You want your running light on all the time. You don't ever want to be driving without a running light. That's pretty dangerous. So I have my running light connected straight to the on off power. I don't have it on that third position that I use for the headlight. The next thing you need is a positive wire that goes down to one side of the coil. So when you turn your switch on, it powers the coil right away. And that's how you're able to start it. If you leave your ignition on for a long period of time, you can burn your coil up. You have to have a wire from the ignition module to the coil. And the way that works is the module is grounded or the points are grounded. And then this wire provides the ground for the coil. When your ignition comes around and triggers, it provides the ground and when it lifts, you get spark. I have a very detailed video on how ignition systems work that you should check out if you're having an issue. The last wires that you have, you have two wires that come off the stator and they go to the rectifier regulator. And then you come out of here, now this voltage comes out of here, that's your charging voltage. That comes up here and goes onto this block. When the charging voltage comes up here, it goes backwards through your switch, through your circuit breaker and charges your battery. 
but it also provides that voltage to the rest of everything that's using the 12 volts. That's pretty much the only thing you need for a bare bones chopper. Now, if you're real worried about it, and I don't have this, but you would also need a brake switch wire that comes off the handlebars. I don't have that. I'm always hitting the back brake with the front brake or just the back brake, so I never have to worry about that. The only unsafe issue with not having a brake light switch on the handlebars is if you have both feet on the ground, you're on a hill, and you're holding the brake, your brake light wouldn't be lit. Now, the one other part that a lot of people have is an electric starter. I, like I said earlier, on my bike, I'm kick only. But if you have electric starter, you have to have a heavy gauge wire that comes off of the battery and goes over to a solenoid. That's why I have this drawn real thick. It's a heavy gauge wire. And then off the other side of the solenoid, you have another heavy gauge wire that goes down to the starter. But you have to fire this solenoid. And the way you fire that solenoid is you have 12 volts off this block that goes over to some kind of starter switch. When you push this switch, you want the starter to crank. So it closes comes over to the solenoid and causes the solenoid to fire, which connects these two wires together. And that is going to cause your starter to turn. Again, the starter is grounded through the body. This diagram covers the minimum wiring you need to have for a custom wire installation. Again, like I said, I'll include a couple videos that will be helpful. Here's what my high low beam switch looks like. It also has a middle position where the light's off. Don't really need that. Here's my key switch that's off. This is on, it just has the coil on and the rear tail light. And then when I turn it forward, the headlight's on. There's my tail light. Right here is the pressure switch that goes directly into the caliper. And that also acts as your banjo bolt. The nice thing about this, it allowed me to shorten the wire. I ran power back to here and then I come back in the harness and just come right up into the light. So it's a real short run of wire there also. On this bike, I happen to have that terminal block and my coil underneath the transmission. Again, check out my walk around video of this bike. The only thing you see on my handlebars is the brake line and they're plastic. They are DOT approved. There would be a switch in this housing, but like I said, I don't have that. I have an internal throttle cable that goes down through the handlebars and then comes out right there some point down the road, I'm going to build a custom set of bars. Of course, I'll make a video on that. I like these, but I'm not super crazy about them. And I'd like something a little more custom. Here it is again before I colored it all in. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'm sure I can help you through this. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You get all this free information from me. The only thing I ask is that you hit the like button and subscribe. And that doesn't cost you anything. Also, there is a notification button. You know, if you could hit that, that'd be great too. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.